Hi, and welcome to the SEO Podcast, Unknown Secrets of Internet Marketing. Yeah. My name is Chris Burris, owner of eWebStyle. <laughs> Sound like you forgot your name. <laughs> my name is Charles Lewis, your internet marketing specialist. I have indeed forgot my name from time to time. <laughs> and not this time. Don't forget we are your friendly local neighborhood top position. Snatchers. Where our mantra is... Don't be a douche. Do not be a douche. Um, remember, if you're sitting at a desk, have some sort of mobile device, have any possible way. Yeah, steal twirl, the laptop or the dick. iPad of the person next to you and tweet about yes. this. Tweet, uh, this hashtag is part- SEO Podcast 129. And include at eWebStyle to make sure we see that message. Got you, because I'm going to read a, a couple of messages uh, where people have uh, addressed us specifically. Is that mm-hmm. what, really that, what that mentioned at, us? Mentioned us. There we go. Um, well, it really depends on what you're using. Tweet dick calls it a mention. Right. The web calls it an, a reply. Right. So, one or the other. Yeah. So, it can't, it can't be a reply if, like, it's the first time they're doing it on Twitter. So that's why we call it a mention. mention. There we go. <laughs> cool. It's a mention. Uh, as always, from our last podcast, which was 128, uh, the tip is uh, proper research and planning is paramount hmm. for a mobile version of your website. Um, we talked extensively about mobile versions and our impressions and, and even challenges that we've had with our own clients um, uh, in, in really – uh, us guiding them and them steering us uh, on um, how to do a mobile site for a particular for a particular right. client. Uh, so that was podcast number 128. Go and listen to that. We've got a review. Woohoo! No tattoo too. iTunes review too. Yeah, it's even iTunes. This is from uh, Good Job on Improving Audio. This is from Patterson JD. Uh, and, well, okay. And go ahead. <laughs> and the guy says, uh, and he says, thanks guys for improving the audio quality. I heard you read my review on the 11.4 podcast and wanted to let you know I submitted it back in September, so there might be some time lag. I'm going to uh, 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 paraphrase here. He is writing this review on 11.14, changing his prior four-star rating to a five because we responded to our listeners' opinions. Appreciate it. Punch in the face to you, Patterson. Um, if you have any tips for WordPress users, please share them. Uh, for example, there is an all-in-one SEO plugin that he uses. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, we use it too. Uh, and if we're familiar with it, you'd love our opinion. Our opinion is it's worth using. <laughs> yeah. Um, big punch in the face for the audio improvement. Haha, <laughs> stay cool. Uh, punch in the face, Patterson. Yeah. That's that's awesome. Punch in the face to you. I mean, yeah, I use the all-in-one SEO plugin for WordPress. A uh, great plugin to use. If I had to find some fault somewhere, it would be it would appear that they give you more control over the tags for the home page and not necessarily that same control for the remaining pages. And so, um, you know, I think uh, if you scroll down on a post, there's 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 credentials you can put, and maybe there's it's missing one or two tags that the home page has. Okay, okay, yeah, you've clearly spent more time. Let me not. Interject, <laughs> but other than that, it's a it's a great it's a great plugin. It works well, um, and and it even doesn't break when you update WordPress. So that's good. That that is pretty cool. One of the challenges we have found is when we do uh, e-commerce plugins. You know, does it interact with those? And and really, we're just finalizing a project now, so we'll have some more information about yeah. uh, how that all well, all washes out. Um, a little bit of news: Android 4.0 arrives just in time for Nexus. Google to, to come out. Mm-hmm. So that's exciting, a new version of Android. You know, there's a couple things that drive me nuts. Often when I hit message, it goes to the last, and I know message I have a new from message. Your phone? Yeah, okay. on the phone. So going to my text messages, uh, it, often it'll go to where I was. Like, mm-hmm. so if I was reading a text from you and I got one from my wife, and I know I got one from my wife, and it says one new one. I press that and it goes right to you. It doesn't really make sense. And when I hit back, it actually goes back to home. I've got to go back to it. It's it's yeah. a little wonky. Uh, and then in the marketplace, you do a search. Say you do a search for SEO tools, um, and uh, or just SEO, right? And it's a general search. And you're like, wait a minute, I need SEO tools. So you go back, you search again, and there's that SEO option. When you click it it automatically searches for SEO. It doesn't allow you to <laughs> add to that search. I really just want you to populate the text box yeah, and then I can tools. add the word tools, exactly. So um, if uh, anybody on the Android team is out there, get that fixed. Um, I thought this was cool, uh, or at least interesting. Most kids who break net house rules, so the rules you set up for their, your kids, 
have internet house rules. Internet okay. house rules have bad experiences as opposed to kids who follow the house rules. What does that mean? Well, I think they just took a poll and and it, you know maybe they're not following the house rules, so they're going to places where they end up getting bullied. Or I mean, how frustrating is it when you're writing reviews and somebody makes it personal or you know mm -hmm. whatever? Uh, it, it, I can easily see how <laughs> if you don't really watch yourself, you can have a bad experience on the web. I just that's why I you know I refuse to put the computers in my children's room. All the computers are in my office. And my office is off limits after nine, <laughs> you know. Right. So, no, unless you're doing homework or something. A little little internet research. Yeah. Um, here's something else. Uh, there's another patent by IBM that is now owned by Apple, <laughs> and so they're taking. And it was it, this patent is um it's actually related to searches on a mobile device based on location. So it's a pretty significant patent, mm -hmm. right? It, 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 it interrupts or affects you know Foursquare and uh, Facebook places and you know all of this searching that's going on. Um, and the interesting point in the article is once again, just like the GUI interface and the mouse, <laughs> Apple has control of IBM technology and is actually profiting from it wow. as opposed to IBM. <laughs> um, a little activity on our Facebook page. Dean Calhoun, he's so so awesome. I, I, I wrote a note to him. If you get on our Facebook page, which, by the way, is facebook.com slash eWebStyle. And I mentioned tweeting about us. You can follow us on twitter.com slash eWebStyle. Our YouTube page is youtube.com slash eWebStyle. And our email podcast at eDeskWebStyle.com. Wow. Yeah. We, just, we just nailed that. Um... I posted on our Facebook page that, Dean, we both hate and love you because you give us more work and you give us great information. Um, <laughs> he said he just heard a quote that he thought we would like, <laughs> and this is from Mike Tyson, everyone has a strategy until they get punched in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just brilliant. Yeah. The strategy goes out the He's window. Like, ah! yeah. <laughs> Don't get hit. Don't get hit. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Dean, he also uh, awesome. he had our back. He says, "Boo! Sorry, you guys got that bad review. Don't change your personality. They are an integral part of your per uh, of your podcast. The key to social media is to be yourself and be human." So I, I think that that's cool. Well, I mean, it, technically, that was going to happen anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we will do our Ultra Dry podcast never. Yeah, on the 33rd of February. <laughs> um, and then on Twitter, some people had uh, included us or mentioned us. Uh, just found you on iTunes, listening to podcasts now. Great format and in my wheelhouse. I'm assuming that means his car. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, just, so. I'm going with that. And it, by the way, it took from the 25 minutes ago that I printed it, read and printed this, until now for me to figure what that out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just guessing. Uh, and that was from Wise Global. At so, Wise Global. That's yep. what's up, man. At James Piper 90 says another good SEO podcast, guys. And he's actually podcast.neo1seo.com. I think I've I've listened to that. I'll go check it out. Uh, definitely worth listening to during your commute, fellow SEOers. Um, and then Greg's the face to Jay's Piper ninety. Greg San Diego. What's up, Greg? Listen to podcast from uh, ten twenty four eleven on keywords. A that's good a one. Oh, did I, what did I say? Twenty four. Wow. <laughs> ten twenty five eleven. I'm just a little faster than him. <laughs> <laughs> he says this is a good quote. Google does funny things. I I think that was that was the yeah. the big. Charles here who said that. Um, wow, we blew through that all of that stuff. Um, here we go. Content. We are apparently we've met the Geno time limit. Um, we've we, we, both Charles and I were kind of uh, scouring uh, uh, SEO uh, news sites and figuring out what we wanted to talk about. And I came across this one I thought was really interesting. It's an eye tracking study in Google Maps. So one of my first questions is, oh, by the way, mentioning questions, go to our Facebook page. Hit the discussion tab. Which we don't have anymore. <laughs> Scroll down a little bit. You must have just removed it. I, yeah, I think our SEO guy okay. did or maybe uh, Facebook did or so. I don't know. Um, we and, so and we weren't getting much activity on it. Uh, go scroll down on the left and uh, <laughs> and there's questions or just scroll down in the body on, on the wall 
of, uh, of our Facebook page and we have a question and the question is interesting if you're uh, on a mobile website how often do you go to the full desktop version of that website and we've you know got options like always never 25 percent of the time 50 etc uh, so go fill that out we've we haven't got many responses it's just really interesting stuff uh, to, to understand what people do so um, eye tracking in Google Maps that that like how many people use Google Maps for anything like the only reason I ever click maps when I'm doing a search is because I'm just looking for somebody one of our clients places page to see if it's you know 100% complete or not uh, as mm -hmm. you know it's important that it be 100% complete um, so I never use Google Maps except for the actual app maps on my phone in the car well um, I use maps on the web yeah I use from it time to time from time to time yeah I would like to see um, well mainly it's for research purposes I do SEO and PPC, and so I'm looking at different towns, different areas, different zip codes, and so I tend to look at it from that perspective. Right. Or more importantly, when they're embedding maps and different pages on websites, I don't really use it for the sake of like a general search. user would use it. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't go to maps and then search, you know, tattoo, which is the example I think they yep. used, and then see which tattoo comes up. I would probably just do a regular Google search and. Look at the A through G list and they showed up on the SERPs page. Right. I I think that I mean that's that was kind of one of my questions. How many people use it now? One and we all know people search totally different ways. Mm -hmm. um, somebody may have you know hot linked or you know favorited on their desktop the map the maps page and they don't even realize that they think a Google search is <laughs> a map result uh, search. Yeah, my um, grandmother would probably do that. Yeah. Right. So um, so there's certainly some people out there and this was an interesting article talking about how important it was to have uh, things like reviews um, and things like images so the first example that they used is say let's, let's search for uh, tattoos near Hamilton Ontario My crazy Canadians always wanting to get tattoos um, and then it did the heat map you may remember from a while back the Google Golden Triangle which showed how important being on the first three positions really first position more so obviously uh, and the first three positions being very powerful uh, when you're doing when you're when you're working towards getting on the first page of Google and actually adding value to your website or your clients website so they did that same heat map study and they did it on Google Maps and what they found was is that if the first couple of results had those extra kind of social components mm -hmm. a review an image then they tended to follow the standard Google Golden Triangle if and then they did the same search near London Ontario if and in that case the first two didn't have any of the social stuff so okay. it was just the link to the website and the brief description and uh, you know for the first two and then the next ones had you know, like reviews and more information and, and, more information. and so it, it was able to skew the classic Google Golden Triangle down towards that one that had more information uh, pretty readily we see this with uh, w yeah. what used to be Google Boost right mm -hmm. on pay-per-click uh, and is now Google places local Google local easy places or something you know automated that you have no control over it places um, <laughs> and, uh, and and so we're running that type of ad because it has an extra it has extra fields it has our um, our mm -hmm. rating we're working on getting a, a Google shopping cart uh, in place because that will actually show up there that we take Google payments. Well, I think it's that and it's a combination of colors, frankly. Yeah. I mean, the, you know, usually those reviews and, and things of that nature show up with the, the, the icon, a yep. uh, different color, it's yellow, it's blue, it's red, yep. and, and you just tend to look there. It, well, it's kind of like uh, in the old yellow pages if you wanted to bold or italicize and you had to pay a little extra because it was clear that out of a, an entire page of non-bolded and non-italicized mm -hmm. text, those are going to stand out. So, um, really, the lesson here is the same lesson that we've been saying over and over and over again. Make sure that your Google Local Places listing, and it's probably just called Google Places, right? Yeah. It's not. I, I keep. It used to be Google, Google Local, Local. Yeah. and so make sure your Google Places listing is 100% complete. That means I think about five images. I ten think images. Ten images, ten five, images videos, five videos. Five videos. Up to um, five categories. Um, hours. 
you got to have your hours placed, posted. What payment forms do you take? Um, you've got to have all of that information filled out uh, in order to have a 100% complete listing. That helps your ranking in the A through G and uh, and will help any old grandmother or aunt <laughs> who is, thinks when they search maps they're searching Google, it'll help you, help you out there. So um, I thought that was an interesting article. And we should give them appropriate credit is written by Matt McGee. Uh, and it's eye tracking in Google Maps study shows value of number one ranking and social content. So um, go check that article out. What do you got? You got something? I got this here. Um, another article we found. Um, oh yeah, that was good. One. Yeah, this is by Todd. And um, and my title got cut off. Google updates. And basically, oh, and year in review. And he was basically talking about a lot of the things. That, that happened throughout the year that Google did. But I printed the article because um, a couple things stood out. He had some decent stats on here. One of the stats was 15% um, of Google users, Google queries, come from mobile devices. And I saw that. With local intent. It, local intent? And well, it even defines like the IP, right? Is it a local IP or was that some other. Uh, I guess that's the impression that I have. No, I don't think it, it didn't. I don't think it was about IP. You were just saying yeah. that 15% of Google queries come from mobile devices uh, with those queries um, having local intent. That's huge. Yeah. I mean, I think for that reason itself is a reason to update your Google Places page. Yep. And, and you know, go back and listen to our previous co podcast about uh, mobile uh, versions of your website. Mm-hmm. And then it went on to say uh, there were some great strides in local results and listings. Um the former Panda update redirected our content, uh, and you know, really, it kind of closed out talking about doing your SEO properly, making sure you had the right content, and and kind of include social because all of the updates that Google is making, um, they're kind of tying things in together. So you definitely want to make sure you across the board handle everything. Right. Yeah. It, it was a good article. We'll be actually doing our year in review here pretty soon, and I think last year it was a two pod. It was yeah, two, two podcasts. Two yeah, basically we just go through uh, each of our podcasts throughout this year and and kind of rehash uh, details in each of those. Uh, we may thin it down a little. Yeah. I think it's still worth to. I mean, and think we about breezed it. through it. We didn't yeah. harbor on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, and we got about fifty podcasts in a year, right? So fifty or so. Um, so really, there's a lot of information to go over, and and it's worth going over. Uh, and you know, it's the old practice of learning when you repeat the information it sticks with you longer so uh, and we know that we end up repeating information so I found this I thought that was interesting it's certainly not our our particular niche uh, and it's probably going to become more and more of our, our niche uh, mm -hmm. this is seven quick steps to Foursquare marketing um, maybe all of you don't know what Foursquare is uh, Foursquare is an app um, that you can all smartphone devices you can download it and really it's the same it has a lot of the features it's really the app that caused Facebook to create Facebook places yeah um, no Foursquare no Facebook places and so you can sign in uh, to, to Foursquare when you pull up your Foursquare app it figures out where you're located finds places around it and then you can check into that place and it was interesting when it first came out it was kind of it felt redundant because it's almost what Twitter was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I am wherever. Mm -hmm. And the, the fact that you actually get to check in was well, one step that made easier. It neat. Made, it what made it neat. Well, it made it easier, right? Yeah. I think what made it neat was that now it's tracking you and who else is at the same place because it really has one data position as mm -hmm. that location and then it gives you badges and now you know Charles and I are competing for uh, as friends for the, the most four square points in a it's every week right it's it resets every week, every week. Mm -hmm. um actually I've, so we've got i think we're i think darren Bowie is even on my list so in the uk <laughs> i'm competing with him to see how many places i can uh you know how many places i'm oh, checking in i would like to see improved is if it would show the length of time uh, or the time when somebody checked in mm -hmm. that could be possibly dangerous right right but I check in a lot of places and um, and it'll say, oh, such and such is here, and I don't know this person, or, or I may know them because right. they're a friend of mine, right? right? And so um, I like to see 
you know, when were they here? Yeah. Did they just check in? If that's the case, let me find them. Right. <laughs> you know? Well, and that's a great point. I mean, and, and, and they could write it, say, understand what's the average time you stay at a Starbucks. Is it 15 exactly. minutes? Is it five minutes? What's the average time you stay at a bar? Yeah. Significantly longer than a Starbucks. <laughs> you know, what time, how long do you stay at a bowling alley or a restaurant? Mm-hmm. So then it, it, it probably has some of that built into it. Maybe not just enough. By the way, if I were single... I would be using Foursquare to like have backup information. Do you know? Do you know Tom? Yeah. You're the one who I met you once through Tom, <laughs> who I see as your friend on your Facebook pro on your Foursquare profile that you checked in here. Now, interesting news about Foursquare. And I read that this morning actually. They are they redid their web version because they're trying to get into a uh, um, city guide. Oh uh, wow! Stuff, letting people check in where most check-ins are at, who's checking in where. Makes sense. Where where your friends usually check in and hang out at, um, and try to help people find things to do, um, kind of tourist type stuff. So. Well, I check in three places now. I check in on Facebook. I check in on Foursquare, which I think sometimes also posts to my Facebook, so I end up checking in twice. And I check in on G Plus. I used to check in on Yelp. So the whole concept, right, makes sense of having a review site and a, and a kind of a, a directory for Foursquare. Um, some of the cool things about Foursquare is you become the mayor if you've checked in at a particular yeah. location more than somebody else. I'm the um, mayor of e uh, Damn, I need, to, I need to check in. You know, like an auto check-in <laughs> software. Um, let's see, what else can you uh, – they have different types of badges. So – um, I think I went to some movie. I, th- I went to the Harry Potter movie, and I got some Harry Potter badge, uh, w- w- which was pretty cool. Actually, I think Javier told me about that, so that reminded me to get. Oh, I got a. I got groped by the TSA. Is that it? The yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. Is, is TSA the right? <laughs> TSA. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, those it was kind of cool. They added a lot of games to it, a lot of kind of fun features. Um, so here's how you market on Foursquare. Add your business. Yeah. <laughs> Number one, because the worst thing I hate is check, trying to check in somewhere, and, and, and I can't find that business. Yeah. And, and frankly, I'm just too lazy to create that business myself, so I just won't check in. Yeah. I think the only business I've created is actually Third Coast Comedy, where, where I perform at. So when I check in there, I, I don't have to. It, it, it's, it's been added by me. Um, next one is add friends. Yeah, definitely. Right? The more people that you have in there, you're you know they're aware of what you're uh, that you've added that business, and, and every time you check in at that business, that this is one of the things that I hadn't really thought of is every time we check in at eWeb Style, it w- reminds all of our friends on on Foursquare that we're here at eWeb Style, mm-hmm. and that can you know it, a lot of advertising and even just networking in general is about top of mind. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe somebody who's you know, so one of our at the office, and one of his friends bumps mm-hmm. into somebody who's complaining about their website, and boom, hey. Wait, Chuck is actually, he's at work right now. You should give him a call. That so uh, Especially because my Foursquare updates lets Twitter and Facebook know <laughs> that I'm checked in here. Right. Makes sense. Um, get active. So that means, you know, make sure you're uh, uh, checking in at certain places. Where this is, along with checking in, add shouts to profile updates that are relevant to what's going on. Yeah. Take uh, pictures. You can usually, when you check in on Foursquare, you can, you know, tag it with some sort of phrase or something. Um, like matter of fact, today's check-in said at E Whip style at the J time to get busy. Right. That was my that was my shout. Um, you know, usually when I check in at church, I'll take a picture or you know something of that nature. So yeah, get active. Don't just check in, but check in and, and leave a tip. Yeah, tips or something are great. like that. Yeah, try the hummus. Not at E Whip style, but somewhere. Try the hummus. Hummus is always good. Actually, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Reward those who check in. So really, that doesn't apply to our business very much. It certainly applies to uh, retail yeah, establishments. You get punched in the face if you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you checked into. You, are you trying to take my mayorship? Come on. You take better watch out. Fool. No. <laughs> Pity the fool. Take my mayorship. <laughs> um, but yeah, give give a, a benefit. Uh, one of the things I do at the church, if people check in on Foursquare after their fourth check in, they get free DVD. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. Um, what was, I was gonna. I, I've actually had free hummus with the check-in. I that's uh, that's probably why that popped into my mind. I checked in uh, at some bar somewhere. I'm like, look, I would like my free hummus, please, and another glass of wine. 
<laughs> um, spread the word. So link your Foursquare account. We talked about this. Link your Foursquare account, account with your Twitter and Facebook accounts so that when you shout or say or check in, it goes on to, to all of those. You know, what was cool, I went in the Walgreens the other day, Howie 6 and Bissonette, and when you walk in the store, it's on the wall. Check in. Check in Foursquare. Wow. I said, no, that's awesome. And then I've been in plenty of Walgreens, but that was the only one I've seen that at. And I'm sure if they, I, do, I think they have a loyalty pro, program. There's probably some sort of loyalty program built into it. If not, I'm sure it's coming soon because Bing already has like a, a way to do a loyalty mm-hmm. program. Um, so, you know, utilize that aspect uh, when it becomes readily available. Uh, and then outside the box events. So I don't really know what that is. Yeah. Hold events for Foursquare users so that they can check into your business. One of the things that we talked about, remember we, we were working with a, a guy who was, uh, it's actually Puro Vida Tequila, mm-hmm. uh, opening a tequila brand in Texas. And uh, and one of our initial ideas was, hey, let's figure out if we can get like a, a you know, a worm badge or something. So if they're, if they're having multiple events and you check into four different uh, Puro Vida Tequila events, that uh, you actually get the worm badge. So um, I think I, I'm sure there are ways to do that because there are. Yeah, you can create your own badges and on your own uh, stuff. Is there a cost to that? Do you know or? Again, I don't think there's a cost. You set it up when you when you create the when you create your business profile on there. Then you you get certain options to set up multiple locations, badges, and then you know things like that. That same place you add in the benefits. You know, like right. the free DVD and right. things like that. Okay. I don't think there's a cost associated with it. Well, that's cool. So, yeah, you know, take advantage of that free badge because, you know, people get excited about those badges. I mean, yeah. I, I got excited about getting broke by the TSA, so that's another story. Um, <laughs> do we have any blank stare news, or was that um, it? <laughs> yeah, that is right <laughs> But you did bring up G+. I was going to leave them alone. Uh, but since you brought them up, uh, yeah, G plus. I'm still stuck in my situation. Oh, it's, it it got worse. It right? got yeah, worse. Got worse. Now they're forcing. Oh, wait, 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 we need to. Yeah. yeah, this is the blank stare with the with the yeah. old head shake. Yeah, like I can't even believe I'm still having problems with this. After Google. you made it, after you tried to fix it, <laughs> it got worse. So, so I'm using MoSeries.com. That's my personal email account, but it's on a Google Apps account. So they opened up G Plus for Google Apps. Yay, right? Problem is, I had already been using G Plus for that same email account, and so now I have one that's full, friends, thousand circles, and I use it. Well, I could use it, and now they're forcing me to use a new one, that's same right. email address. Crazy part about it is, if I <laughs> if I go to my address directly, I'll see my old profile, but right. I can't do anything with it. I right. can't post a comment. I can't add a circle. I can't do anything because it always links over to the new one, which is totally blank. Why? That's what are you doing this to me? Totally blank, as in our stare. That's that's it's bizarre. He's in some sort of Google Plus Never Never Land. Yeah, Twilight Zone. And he knows that he needs to bite the bullet <laughs> and move all of his content and all of his friends oh, over well, to the circle. Oh, it worse. Speaking of friends, friends can add me on the other oh. one. Oh! <laughs> yeah, I keep getting emails. Somebody just put you in that circle. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's wor- that's worthy of blank stare. Yeah, that sucks. The other blank stare was at this 23-year-old dude in Nebraska. Dude's trying to buy some drugs. So he's texting Misses a character. <laughs> Takes the state trooper. What? The state trooper meets him at the drop off spot and arrests him and the drug dealer. Wow. <laughs> See you for the drug. Yeah, stop texting and driving. <laughs> wow. Another curse you, you autocorrect. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's hilarious. That's that's my yeah. stare news. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening. You have been listening to the most popular SEO podcast on iTunes. That is because of you. Yeah, you Do not you, forget you over there. our other podcast, which is the Unknown Secrets of SEVO Website Analysis. Mm-hmm. Uh, SEVO stands for Search Engine Visitor Optimization. You can indeed find that already on iTunes. Uh, it is a video uh, podcast, so you can watch videos of us doing website analysis. Analyses. Website analyses. Analysis. 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> on uh, on websites that have been submitted on uh, on our website. So if you want us to do that for you, just go to e-webstyle.com, uh, and then on the right side you'll see uh, review my website. I think that's what it's website analysis, yeah. free website analysis. <laughs> and really? Really? <laughs> it says that. <laughs> when did we change that? Uh, and fill out that form, and if you're lucky, we'll draw your uh, website out of the hat, and we'll do analysis on it, and we'll send you the video of it, and that'll become part of our uh, Unknown Secrets of SIVO website analysis. Thank you guys for tuning mm-hmm. in. Until the next podcast, my name is Chris Burrows. Charles Lewis. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>